Fletcher Tobito. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll just uh, take a minute to reply to some of the Minister's statements because they, um, they bear um, mentioning again in that uh, in justifying this tax on uh, what I think everyone in the House agrees is a tax on the poor, he listed a litany of underfunding in our public health system. He told us where this money would be used to plug gaps. He told us that this government has not allocated enough in this budget to keep up with immigration flows. The government has not allocated enough to um, keep up with uh, inflation. And so there's still this huge gap in the provision of health to New Zealanders. And he got up and proudly told the House, sir, that the $425 million of extra revenue from New Zealand's poorest will be used to go to plug the gaps in New Zealand's health system. And that is just completely, completely unacceptable. He spoke of reducing harm. He spoke of reducing harm, sir. And I have to agree that the intent of the bill is to reduce harm from smoking. Couldn't agree more. That's what we need to achieve. But as I said in the first reading, sir, this 10% rate will not achieve that. So why will it not achieve that? It's exactly the rate that will put revenue up for the government, 425 million, but it's exactly the rate that will see no substantive response from those addicted to smoking. So they won't react to it. How do I know that? We had people come and speak to um, the uh, Select Committee, the Finance Select Committee, which I was, um, had the pleasure of sitting on uh, a few months ago. And the, what they told the committee, sir, uh, the anti-smoking lobbyists, said that a, a tax of 10% would not actually achieve anything. It would not make substantive or effective changes to get people to actually stop due to the supposed financial pressures. What they actually told the committee was what you need right now is 40 to 50 per cent increases and then um, 20 per cent from there on out. In fact, not only did they put forward these higher numbers, they said, they said to the committee, they have said to this government that a 10 per cent rate will not achieve what uh, is hoped for in this bill and more than 10 per cent was needed. So if the government believed the health pro professionals that a tax would lead to a decrease in smoking, why did they not accept that the numbers that the pro professionals and experts put forward? This will take $425 million out of the pockets of the poorest, those addicted, the, those who are most struggling. It'll take it out of the Māori community and the Pacifica community the poor disproportionately more than any other group. And it will not make a difference to smoking rates, which is the justification for this tax. Also noted was the, that the tax affects the poor at a far higher rate, more than any other group. So consider, sir, now that we have a system where internalising the cost of smoking Actually, and what I mean by that is putting the tax on smokes and making those who suffer from it pay for their addiction um, actually covers far in excess of the costs that the health system needs to um, service the um, health problems from smokers. We've more than recuperated the negative externalities to society here. That is, smokers, sir, it is suggested pay more than three times the cost of the burden they are to society. So now I say, and I acknowledged at the start of this debate, that in the past these um, tobacco um, excise taxes made a difference to consumption. But I put it to the House yet again that they will not achieve their stated objective and that the government has gone too far today. This tax will not stop smoking. And I put it to the government that it is just arrogance, it is just apathy, it is just indifference. They have been told that this bill will hurt the poor 
more than any other group in society. But that's fine because the Minister says it will be used to plug gaps in the health system. So reducing the occurrence of smoking is vital. There's no debate. New Zealand first agrees. Let's, stop, let's lower the occurrence of smoking. Let's help people stop. But let's realise the reality of this. Treasury. Treasury itself has said tobacco taxes were very efficient for raising revenue because the addictive nature of nicotine meant smokers were not highly sensitive to price increases. Did they hear that? The people who they presume are going to stop smoking because of price increases won't. Treasury has told them this before. They are addicted to the substance, they will not stop smoking and they are not sensitive to these increases. I put it to this House that this is actually just a cynical move that will achieve nothing excepting the further crushing pressure that those addicted to smoking already experience now. The poor will continue to smoke at the expense of other essentials. Families and children will miss out in order to feed an addiction. <laughs> Consider further, Mr Speaker, that Massey University tax expert uh, Dr Russell said reducing smoking, and I quote, was an excellent public health goal. Couldn't agree more. But could have unintended consequences. She went on to say higher prices could create a black market in tobacco. This could undermine any public health benefits. So what we have to realise then, sir, and this is quite recent, we look at reports just from across the ditch there, where <coughs> excuse me, we see a huge upswing in Australian organised crime in response to the same strategies used by the Australian government in supposedly suppressing the occurrence of smoking within individuals within these own society. They see it as the same problem we do. But what we see from our neighbours is actually this will achieve nothing and in fact exacerbate a problem outside of smoking in and of itself. It will lead to a black market. We've seen examples from Australia around organised crime, and that is, without a doubt, what will happen in New Zealand. Without a doubt, if cigarettes go up into this price range. The other irony of this government policy, and we saw it in some of the interviews last night and this morning, is that the implementation of this higher and higher tax rate is the move for individuals to grow their own tobacco. And, and it makes sense for them. They can't sell it, but they'll grow it themselves. So what's the irony in the situation? The irony in the situation is by increasing tax rates on smoking, the tax take will actually decrease because you're incentivising people to grow their own and bypass the legitimate market. So where is the tax gate going to come from to help the people who need um, our health system? It, it won't be from smokers because they'll be growing their own and bypassing that system entirely. The incidence of criminal activity will rise. Let's help people to quit smoking but this is not, and I repeat, this is absolutely <coughs> not the way to do it. Thank you, Mr Speaker.